very good evening to everyone we are here with yet another session and this session will be very informative and very new to all of us to understand what is chiropractic and to understand chiropractic we are here with speaker kripa but she is a doctor of chiropractic she learned body science therapy and performance center and she went to canadian memorial chiropractic college and she is right now in brampton ontario canada and i welcome you ma'am with my on your growth team to in this platform and i hope that this session would be so informative for all of us to understand what is chiropractic and what is the importance in today's generation in today's life with terms to patient treatment with terms to patient intervention so welcome you ma'am in this platform thank you um yeah i'm really excited to be here um a lot of people outside of north america or outside of europe don't know what a chiropractor is uh, my own family in india sometimes is just like i don't know what a chiropractor is so yeah i hope um i hope i can help is there any sort of specific questions you want me to answer or do you want me to just tell you all about it first we'll start with your discussion and then later we'll have question and answer okay so um chiropractors are um spine muscle joint and nervous system experts so the schooling here after your undergrad is more or less the same as any medical doctor so you learn all of that but you also learn um treatments so everything we do is mainly hands on treatments so soft tissue therapy um and we do something called manipulation so that's when people hear the cracks and things like that um so that's when a joint is not moving properly the chiropractor can help move it properly that's that's one of the we call it a controlled act so nobody else can perform that unless you are a medical doctor doing it in a hospital or unless you're a chiropractor here so it is kind of like a physiotherapist but here physio is 2 years um chiropractic is 4 years after an undergraduate bachelor's degree so we have a little more schooling um and we also know more about the muscular system and the nervous system than um physiotherapists normally are exposed to so we can treat things like back pain neck pain um strains sprains any pains with arthritis um any injuries that come from accidents work accidents anything that you can imagine you can probably see a chiropractor for yeah okay so my first question to you what is the importance of anatomy in the chiropractic as a doctor yeah so we have to you know everything so essentially we know every muscle every nerve um every insertion origin everything because when we're going to be working on a muscle we need to know that we are correctly on that muscle um we also have cadavers so we do have the um anatomy labs where we'll go and look at the the human specimens and things like that um throughout our studies so it's extremely important because if you are working on one nerve it probably will affect another part of the nerve that innervates the muscles um we also have to do visceral anatomy because sometimes say for example somebody has a kidney infection they come in with back pain we need to know that this is not just back pain and this is kidney infection and so we need to send them to their doctor so anatomy is very very important okay and that is very true if you are manipulating something with the spine that is very what exactly. is the delicate part of our body very delicate yep so my next question would be to you as your qualification comes for four and four years so why the importance of lab investigation comes like x ray ct scan or etc or physical examination is enough to perform on that uh, patient to do chiropractic so usually um usually a physical examination without any testing like without any imaging is enough to find what the problem is if we feel like there's a fracture there's a break there's a tumor there's something that we can't see or we can't sort of reproduce with our physical examination then we can do imaging um chiropractors in canada are allowed to do their own x-rays so we are allowed to have an x-ray machine and perform x-rays on our own um so some people do that some people prefer out because that's a whole other thing where you have to read the x-ray and you have to be good at it and you just don't want to risk that so a lot of people just send them to their family doctor here 
and then the family doctor gets the x-ray done. Um, sometimes the x-ray is important, again, in things where maybe we think it's more than just a muscular problem, um, but usually it's not required. Um, some, some schools of chiropractic are different, um, and they say that you need to x-ray every single person's neck before you adjust them, before you manipulate them. Um, but uh, that's not what we're taught in school because the evidence says that we don't need to do that. All the research and evidence says that we don't need to do that. So it is important to know when to do the imaging, but imaging is not required before every treatment. Yeah, and because it is a cost-effective measure and it is helping, it is having a radiation in it. So exactly. So we have to limit the amount of radiation and just make sure that it's necessary in order for to send the person out. Um, you're not going to send them out if you know that it's just a muscle strain or, you know, they fell and they scraped their knee. So then they've hurt their quad muscles or hamstring muscles. You don't need to send an x-ray just for that. Um, if you think, hey, this person fell and they fractured their patella, then yes, you're going to send them for an x-ray. Sure. So my next question would be, do you commonly treat any conditions like just by seeing the patient? Yeah. You, what's your observing? observance of the different different kind of diseases which are commonly uh, comes to the chiropractors so most common thing is back pain neck pain um that's that's the most common thing that's going to come to the chiropractor however um shoulders are also very common um shoulder pain because people for some reason nowadays because there's a lot of people in the trades and they do a lot of overhead work, they get a lot of frozen shoulder um, and chiropractors can help with that. So the main thing that we see are bread and butter for the most part is neck, neck pain, mid back pain and low back pain. Um, shoulders, I would say are also very high up there. But again, people come in sometimes with just trigger finger, they come in because they have bursitis. Um, you do see everything, but right now it's mainly just um, neck back and mid back. That's probably like 70% of the population that sees chiropractic. Okay. So that is uh, at another part of perspective if we see it as a doctor. But if I ask you, if a patient comes to you, to your clinic, to your hospital, how many days in a week he or she have to come? What duration of a treatment is it required for a particular patient? So there's no set requirement for anybody for any specific um like in general, you couldn't just say this person's going to come in this many times. It depends on the person, depends on their pain, depends on what is causing their pain and what the doctor themselves um, bases it off of their experience. So sometimes you would also look at the literature and say, OK, for frozen shoulder, for example, someone's going to come in two times a week for six weeks and then you're going to see results. Um, so that's that's what people might base it off. But it, there's no general rule to be you have to come this many times you have to see somebody this many times someone might come once every month so um just to maintain themselves so really it's um it kind of is patient dependent it's that's the whole thing is also individualized care which is important um because you're not gonna ethically you can't make them come any more than they need to and you can't make them come any less than they have to be there yeah because convenience is the most important part of our practice. And my next yeah. question would be to you, what techniques do you practice? Is any patient asked to you when they come to your hospital or they ask to you what kind of preferences or research done on what you are practicing right now? Is there any patient you come across in your practice and how do you convince them? Uh, like convince them to see a chiropractor? No, after they reach to you to some references, they come to you and they will ask what kind of techniques and that techniques are safe or they will have some references to the research paper or not. Okay, okay. So usually um, what majority, I'm going to say majority of chiropractors do is soft tissue treatments, um, manipulations, and some of them also use modalities in their clinics like... Um, interferential current, so IFC, laser, ultrasound, heat packs, ice packs. Um, and then we're also allowed to do acupunctures. Um, if you've taken the course, you can do acupuncture as well. Um, so personally, I would do soft tissue 
treatment and um, adjustments. So I'm more of a hands-on person. I don't like to use modalities because I think they're just a Band-Aid. So there is always a risk, of course, with any treatment, um, just like anything else that you do. So we would go through the risks. Um, for example, if you are going to adjust somebody's mid-back, um, if they have a very, very low bone density, um, you're potentially risking a uh, fractured rib, depending on how much force you put through. But again, these are risks that we go through with every single person. Um, and if they have literature being like, hey, this, this, and this, we know that all of the risks are very, very minimal and they're very, very rare. Um, so that's just what you have to tell the patient. Of course, they have to give informed consent for us to do anything and move forward. So they have to understand completely that it's very, very minimal, but the risk is of course always there, like with any treatment. Yeah. Uh, if you see a patient, every system of medicine is having a risk, certain amount of risk is there. Exactly. How do you differentiate that um, uh, emergency or allopathic medication or chiropractic? Is go hand on hand or there are some differences which we need to sort it out? Sorry, uh, emergency medicine? Emergency in the sense allopathic medication or in, uh, modern medications, what we do, tablets or surgery. So, so I think I think they could go hand in hand. Um, so medication is kind of outside of the scope of practice for chiropractors. Yeah. So we can't really talk about medication. Um, we can't prescribe. We can't talk about the medicine with patients, things like that, because we are alternative um, care. I think that they can go hand in hand. So if somebody needs a muscle relaxant, then absolutely they're going to go to their family doctor and get a muscle relaxant, right? Um, and then they're going to come see a chiropractor for relief. Um, so, you know, once I get my license and I start treating, that's a conversation that I would have to have with patients who ask. Um, you know, I can't talk about medication. Please see your family doctor. I don't say anything against medication. I just think that there needs to be there needs to be a balance. Like I respect family doctors, family doctors have to respect chiropractors. So you have to be able to put both together, um, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, that is very true. And yeah. what are the rules and regulations in your countries followed for practicing chiropractors or for studying chiropractors, both the things? So um, in order to study again, it's eight years after your high school. Um, to practice, like your scope of practice is um, essentially you can't break the skin for anything except acupuncture um, once you have a license in it. And that is also only in some provinces in Canada that will allow you to do that. Um, you can manipulate, um, you can't talk about medication. Um, we can't write prescriptions and we can't refer directly for lab tests. So if there's any lab tests that need to be done, they have to go through their family doctor. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, how's your graduations completed? Like, what other subjects have you undergone? So, if anyone wants to understand what is chiropractic, so what other subjects they have to study? Um, there's, there's so many. Um, if it's easier for you, I'm gonna send you the link. Um, because we take about nineteen to twenty-one courses in a year. Okay, that is. Uh, Huge number of books, if I see. Yeah, so we take anything from, we take histology, anatomy, pathophysiology, toxicopharmacology, um, manipulation hands-on classes. Um, it, it's, it's crazy, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, the, the studying goes hand in hand with um, like med school. Okay, so how do you prefer if a student from India, suppose they want to come and study the chiropractors as we have done, so what are the things they have to take in care in their program or in their studies? Like how to start? Um, so I would recommend that they know their anatomy inside out. Um, just and be ready for the caseload, like the workload. Um, personally, I've always heard that the workload is much heavier in India um, than it is here. So they might be okay, but 19 to 20 courses at a time can be very heavy. Um, they have to prep time management. You have to have a good work ethic and having a very strong science, science background is not necessary, but it will be very helpful. 
how you have managed your career and how you motivate yourself to study this system of medicine um so i have always had a good work ethic and time management because i've always worked um part time job um while i've been in school so for me when i'm not working i'm studying so that's just how my day goes and um to stay motivated you have to have a good support system so my family is fantastic they've been incredible this whole time also what motivates you is that you're paying $26,000 Canadian a year for school so you're not going to fail <laughs> yeah. you can't you can't do it again um so it ends up being $100,000 in 4 years that you spend so that is a very big amount as a indian if i have to see if i have to look forward it is a, a big so it is it is a big amount so it's a big commitment you know you're going to work hard because you are first of all everything is all of the courses are interesting some courses you don't love as much obviously but you focus on the ones that do seem interest, interesting to you and the ones that you enjoy and you know you you get through it day by day um but the fact that you're spending $100,000 for 4 years is a big thing who's your motivation in your career not from the family side but from your education um there have been multiple i would say multiple people that i have um interacted with the best one right now is my boss actually at my job he's not a chiropractor he's a physiotherapist but he has so much knowledge because he loves to learn so um that's what sort of pushed me and he's very very successful so he's a physiotherapist he has his acupuncture he has a bunch of other certifications so he has he practices many techniques um but i think having that mentor to keep pushing me to be like you know what one day it will pay off that is that's my biggest thing to be honest um he's been fantastic okay. so i'm right now i'm a manager at that clinic before that i worked at another another clinic for 7 years um that one was okay but since i came here it's just really been it's been great cuz he's awesome that is very good and that is that should be there with the doctor and yeah. my next question would be how many percentage of doctors recommend chiropractors in your country um it's it's getting better um i think most still recommend physio first um just because that's what they're used to that's what they're exposed to also chiropractors here don't work in hospitals so and we're not covered by the healthcare system at all it's all private insurance or paying out of pocket and physiotherapy sometimes is covered by ohip which is our healthcare um so that's another reason that um people often refer to physio and not directly to chiropractor but a lot of times in a clinic the physio chiro and massage will work together so people get exposed that way direct referral i'm going to say like maybe a bit over 50% but it's not um it's getting better and better it's just not huge yet still so there's a lot of we are chiropractors here are privately privately working in clinics we don't work in hospitals that is again a chance of working how the system goes in every country and what are the myths do country people have uh in terms Sorry? of what are the myths do people have about chiropractic in your country myths myths the um yeah um so they think it's dangerous um all, some people think that all we do is just crack bones manipulate things like that but they don't realize there's a lot of other things like soft tissue treatments we also very often give rehabilitation exercises so that the person can go home and continue their care at home um yeah the the biggest biggest myth is that all we do is adjustments so how you can convince your patient if suppose i am a patient to you and i am having a neck pain or spinal injury mm -hmm. or i am a paraplegic patient to you and my half part of uh, half part of body is not working or it's paralyzed so how you'll convince me as a doctor that i should undergo your practice of medicine so um what i would do is do a free consultation um not a full initial assessment but a free you know 20 15 minute phone consultation or in person consultation whatever they want i would explain my methods uh make sure that they understand that i'm not just going to do you know just adjustments or just exercises or things like that um and then 
I would advise them to do an initial assessment and a treatment with me. And then we'll see where it goes because um, I, I think the most important thing is education for people. Um, so that's that, that 15, 20 minute phone conversation or whatever it is that will really open their eyes to be like, okay, you know what, I'll give this a try. Um, and that's what most people do. So it's really helpful. And that's a very good thing. If a doctor becomes a teacher means your patients yep. are very helpful. How exactly. and why to exercise is needed in patients of COPD? COPD? Yeah. Uh, is that helpful from your system of medicine? So part not particularly. Um, we don't, because COPD is, is going to be a long issue. Um, so we wouldn't work directly with them. We could oh. definitely help with like exercises or stamina or endurance, things like that. But we wouldn't work directly with um, just COPD. Yeah. And what are the conditions do patients come to you? Like majorly like uh, only bo uh, bones related or tissues related or anything else like lifestyle mainly, disorders? Mainly muscular system. Muscular yeah. system um, is huge. Um, people come with like TMJ issues in their jaw. Um, we do a lot. We do treat a lot of pregnant people oh. um, because that's, that's also huge. So, so it helps them get to, like it helps them have a better better pregnancy better delivery um so yeah that's also a big thing that we do yeah i do have questions from my perspective in india if you have seen many it people out there okay it sector people they do suffer from back pain and neck pain due to their postural differences yep. so are they allowed to go for a chiropractor yeah or absolutely it, I, it would be recommended um, and I think it would be very safe and it would actually be very beneficial for them to so do that because again, we duration we, is it required to so help that, that, that totally depends on the person and what they're presenting with. Um, I wouldn't be able to just give you like a ballpark because it depends on the doctor it also depends on what, how bad their, um, situation is. Okay. So right now we are undergoing like naturopathy yoga system of medicine in India. So how yep. do you integrate with chiropractors? Because we do understand that spinal manipulation or all these kind of techniques is very helpful because we do practice acupuncture here, many things, but do not chiropractic because it's a different system of medicine. You have to understand yep. and learn. So yep. how we can integrate as a system of medicine, integrate for treatment. So because it's a, like a complementary alternative medicine, I would, um, I would think that you could integrate it very well, to be honest, because we do have like naturopaths here that we do work with. Um, so anything that's in the realm of alternative medicine gives you more of a holistic approach, um, I guess, in terms of what's going on in your body. Um, so very often we do work hand in hand. So there's a naturopathic college that is just down the road from the chiropractic college. So they'll come see us, we'll go see them. Um, and I think, it, I think it's a great collaboration between the two of them. That is very true and very great. And what are the benefits of seeing a chiropractor in terms of a big population? Um, pain relief. Okay. Um, if if there's somebody that does exercises with you, then you have exercises to keep you healthier and maintain wellness instead of just seeing them very often. Um, it'll help you probably feel better, be more energized, things like that, only because you're not dealing with the pain. Um, yeah, so I think it's it ends up being a, like a full overall life aspect because you're targeting the discomfort um, in your body. Okay. So we have heard about the association, Canadian Chiro Chiropractic Association or Association of like Chiropractic People. So mm -hmm. what this association would do in your country, like how it benefits a doctor of chiropractic? Um, so the Canadian Chiropractic Association is obviously the one for the whole country. Um, it's a national voice for chiropractors. And then each province has their own regulatory body. So then I would be part of the Ontario Chiropractic Association. So they essentially help in terms of like licensing and making sure you're a member and making sure everything you're doing is up to date. Um, so that's, that's mainly what they do. They, they regulate the profession in that sense. 
okay and if any emergency comes through a doctor like if you have come across any patient and after your treatment it goes wrong in 99.9% this is very true uh, but 0.1% if patient goes wrong through the treatment of chiropractic how the association will help that individual or a doctor um so you would reach out to your um your regulatory body as well as your ins- your malpractice insurance so everybody has insurance um and so that insurance helps you um and you make sure that your like your notes are up to date everything that you have done is for a reason things like that um and if if there's any complaints that they will just come and investigate and things like that they help chiropractors because they i guess it's sort of like the benefit of the doubt um so they will they will of course they will do an investigation but they are aware that people who are members are supposed to be following a certain standard and they understand that there are always risks so if then something was to go wrong um you would just be able to be protected by these the regulatory bodies because they would they would be part of the investigation but it's more so your uh, malpractice insurance that's going to help you so from 26 minutes i'm asking questions to you and that's what my questions were to ask to you so what would be your concluding thoughts towards what we have asked and what you have understood our format and what your experience in half an hour what do you want to share last words to us um i think chiropractic is fantastic i think that it is something that everybody can benefit from no matter what stage of life you're in what age anything like that um cuz chiropractors do a lot more than people think they do and they have a lot to share i think that um it is something that should eventually start in india um because it could benefit so many people there there's people who go from here to there to do like retreats and things like that to treat people um because it's very beneficial so um yeah that's it i think it's a great thing to have and i think with uh naturopathic or holistic medicine or whatever it is i think it could fit in just fine so i would request you whenever you visit to india so do teach us to allow us what are the things to be explored in india and how it start how we can start yeah. or how you can bring with some efforts to in the country because if we learn something like this in the basis of certification program because we do undergo all the subjects you have gone through yeah. do you think we do miss out as a chiropractor because that is very different because of system of medicine so we can understand that part of to under certain courses of 6 months 1 year and that should be regulated by some body in india if anything comes like that we would be very much like what we say helpful for the patients for the people or for the humanity absolutely um where where about are you located in india if right now i am in rajasthan but we all are from different colleges of india so right and where is this zoom uh, like reporting going to be shared uh, it would be shared through our channel on your growth through which we are organizing these talks okay perfect awesome thank you so yeah so no problem um reach out ask any questions um if anybody else wants to reach out they can connect with me on linkedin it's not a problem um i'm again my name's krupa i'm just waiting for my license and i have to finish my last practical board exam because covid pushed everything um and i will hopefully be licensed by september or october okay my last questions to you because you said covid so how you think as a chiropractor or chiropractor you, you can help any covid patient or pre or post situation of covid so in terms of pre i think having a active healthy lifestyle um that integrates sometimes alternative medicine is the best way to go post people end up with a lot of like muscle fatigue muscle atrophy things like that um i think chiropractors can help in that sense kind of get them back to where they were before um that's the main thing we have been seeing some covid patients in our in our clinic already um and they're they're benefiting because they're finally able to like get back to their same fitness level um so that's something we've been able to help with too thank you so much to come on our platform because we have talked about what is chiropractic how it should be studied yeah. and how should be intervention to the patients what are the things it should be treated out 
and yeah. what are the myths in the countries what are the regulation in the country what are the license part of in the country of like canada or brampton where you are located now so yeah. we have covered from first to and in the 30 minutes of what we had the time so thank you so much to cover all the aspects in a very short duration it was a very great talk i must say and i thanks to you to come on our platform for such a no long. problem i've sent the link in the chat um yeah. if you want to take a look those are all the courses that we've had to take in the last four years definitely and i'll do attach with our video description that if you want to learn chiropractic you have to work harder hard. yes absolutely and it's a four years duration it is it's eight years after your high school eight years after your high school so yeah and i must say even who is watching from your country if they watch it is not a system which you have to scare about yourself it is a system you have to believe and you have to understand what it is yep um, and again, all chiropractors practice a little bit differently. So just make sure that the one that you end up seeing or talking to is the one that fits with you. Thank you so much. No problem. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.